I want to broaden the conversation out and bring in Ambassador Richard Williamson. He was Assistant uh, Secretary of State under Ronald Reagan. He is currently the, the Romney campaign senior foreign policy advisor. So, so, Mr. Ambassador, good morning to you. Good morning. Let's just begin with just what we know today as far as the, the, the situation on the streets. We, we know of more rioting in, in Yemen in the capital city there. We, we could hear the crowds over our correspondents' shoulders in, in Cairo and that they are uh, increasing in size, at least in Tahrir Square specifically. How do you interpret everything that's happening? Well, I think what we're seeing in Yemen and Egypt and Libya is... Uh, turmoil that's very disturbing that uh, crowds U.S. interests and uh, frankly is part of a pattern where they see less resolve and strength of the United States and they feel they can uh, have these sort of assaults on U.S. sovereign soil. So it's very disturbing and it's part of a larger Middle East where we have things spinning out of control in Syria and we have Iran about to engage in nuclear breakout. It's a region that has great stress and where America has to provide some strength and leadership that's been lacking. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Williamson, you are an advisor, as we said, to the Romney campaign, and you have been speaking out quite loudly the last few days about what you see as the deficiencies in the Obama administration, how they've handled the situation in the Middle East, specifically in, in Libya. And I want to read you a quote which you said yesterday. You said there is a pretty compelling story that if you had a President Romney, you'd be in a different situation. For the first time since Jimmy Carter, we've had an ambassador assassinated. That seems to suggest that you are blaming President Obama and his administration for the death of Ambassador Christopher Stevens. Well, first, let me be perfectly clear. The people responsible for this horrendous act and this uh, murder are the people that raided that consulate and committed those acts. Having said that, having served as chief of mission abroad for the U.S. as an ambassador, having worked in the State Department, I know there are things that can and should have been done. When uh, there's a change of regime in Libya, we should have learned the lessons of the Baltics, of Timor Leste, of, of Sierra Leone, and that is that we go in there to help for reconciliation and reconstruction. The administration chose not to do that. Second, um, so, the, so some of the capacity of the new government, which uh, is a moderate Islamist government, to be able to deal with these and other issues would be greater. Second, 9-11 uh, is 9-11. It's not a surprise that this is a day where bad things might happen. And it's disturbing to get some reports of intelligence that may have not been followed up. I think the reporters, like yourselves, have to ask what was known, when did the president, the secretary of state know it, what action did they take. I spent time in Libya. I knew the ambassador when I was the president's special envoy to Sudan. I had negotiations in Tripoli. We knew the consulate in Benghazi was less secure. Did he really have to travel on 9-11? So there's a series of technical questions, but the big policy questions are, are we going to be more forward-leaning in providing leadership? Mr. Ambassador, and rest assured. we've not done that. Rest assured, CNN is asking the questions about what the U.S. knew about these attacks before they happened. We asked the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, yesterday, who told us there were simply no warnings. That was his words. We're still, of course, looking into this right now. But you did mention that you have served in past administrations and you have been stationed overseas. Then you also certainly know that these attacks on embassies are things that have gone on for decades. It happened during the Reagan administration in Beirut. It happened at embassies throughout the world, uh, throughout both Bush administrations. It does happen sometimes without warning, correct? Sometimes without warning, but we know absolutely this was not without warning because there was evidence of what was going to happen in Egypt a week or so ahead of time. Second, we are in a heightened situation post 9-11 on the anniversary, which has symbolic uh, needs and symbolic reasons to be concerned about the safety of our people. And third, there are real questions about what contingencies were on the table in the State Department to increase the security in Libya. So I applaud you for continuing to pursue this story. Uh, there's conflicting evidence coming out, and some of it is not comforting. 
Ambassador Williamson, just back to uh, John Berman's original question, let me just uh, phrase it to you again, because again, to quote you, for the first time since Jimmy Carter, we've had an American ambassador assassinated. Yeah. Are, are you saying that had uh, Mitt Romney been president, this wouldn't have happened? Well, first, it's just a fact that we haven't had an ambassador assassinated since Jimmy Carter's uh, presidency. Second, I do think that uh, Governor Romney, who has a view of the Middle East, a view of the Middle East that is stable and secure, where people's dignity and pluralism and economic opportunity are recognized, uh, can be achieved. But it has to be achieved with U.S. leadership and U.S. leadership from the front, not behind. It means giving technical assistance to so, the so people. So given all of these things uh, you're pointing as, out, would it have been prevented had Mitt Romney been president? You're his foreign policy guy. Well, I'll tell you, one of the differences would have been, uh, yeah, one of the differences was Obama cut the assistance to democracy and civil society groups in Egypt dramatically when he came into office. The well, result with all due was respect, in sir, yes, 09, yes or no. 10, with all due respect, answers are more complicated. So give me just 30 seconds. Sure, you got it. The, um, the, uh, we, the U.S. government cut assistance to the reformers uh, for two years. Uh, when TR Square began, the president, uh, vice president of the United States said Mubarak was a reformer, the, uh, a Democrat, the secretary of state reformer. We didn't get out in front. The result was we didn't have relationships with the reformers. They didn't look to us. They didn't trust us. The, this gave room for the Muslim Brotherhood to succeed. We would be, uh, Romney administration would be there, would be more active trying to work with civil society, with reform movements, so we would be partners in this evolution, not running behind and not seen as part of that. I think that changes the dynamic. And so, yes, there would be a difference. Hmm. Ambassador, just quickly, what, first of all, I don't see how uh, changing our relationship with some of the reformers in Egypt has anything to do with the attack in, in Benghazi. but. On this issue of America's just, <laughs> alleged weakness in the Middle East, is it your, in, in, is it your let's, position? Let's talk about Benghazi then. Yeah, yeah let me. I want to ask let's you about that. Let's talk about Benghazi then. Because it seems like you're drawing a straight line to what you view as the Obama administration's weakness. Your word in the Middle East, uh, invi actually inviting these attacks on on U.S. government officials and embassies. Is that your position? My position is. The world's better off when America leads, and so are other countries. Does that, our failure to do that contribute? Yes, it contributes, just as it's contributing to the chaos and deaths in Syria, where we now have 20,000 people killed, innocent people, and uh, the U.S. has basically been missing in action as this has happened over the last 18 months. But if I can go back to Benghazi, one of the lessons of uh, post-conflict situations was that you stay in after the authoritarian leader falls. And if you don't, it contributes to chaos and weak government. The Clinton administration did that in the Baltics and Kosovo. The Bush administration the Balkans, did that in the Timor the East and Sierra Lanes. Oh, excuse me, the Balkans. Ambassador uh, Williamson, I apologize. I, and, I apologize. Uh, and, and we, we, we didn't do to, that in Libya. <laughs> we have to leave this here. Ambassador okay, Richard understand. Williamson, uh, former Assistant Secretary of State and uh, Romney's Senior Foreign Policy Advisor. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. We have so many questions thank still this morning. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Yeah. We do have so many questions still this morning about what's going on around the world. And a head-on starting point, he made the anti-Islamic movie that has spawned these violent protests against the U.S. all over the world. But, but who exactly is he? We look into the shady past of the man so-called Sam Basile coming up next.